All right. I think we are live. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. Sketch here from 343. Welcome to our social stream. Special guest joining us today, Dan Chosich. Dan. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Is this your first time on uh, in this format of this particular uh, stream? Yeah. It's my, I'm usually always behind the camera. You are. So yeah. how's, how's it feel kind of flipping, flipping things here? Uh, it feels like I'm in a room talking to five people. Yeah, well, just yeah. think about it that way. It's much easier. <laughs> just pretend like no one's no one's watching. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're excited to have. Uh, I'm excited to have Dan here today, and of course, all of you watching us here on Mixer. We've got the chat up. Uh, you probably are familiar with how this works, but throughout our broadcast today, we'll keep an eye on the chat. We'll do our best to try and answer some of your questions along the way. Um, I'm excited that Dan's coming here today because we want to take a very special look back at the Halo Infinite E3 trailer. Um, before we do that, I know there's a lot of excitement, a lot of anticipation out there. I do want to just kind of take a step back and do some of my trademark sketch real talk. Uh, we are going to talk about the work that Dan and the team did from very beginning pitch and that came into the trailer that you all saw back in June. But if you're here today kind of looking for new like juicy scoops on Halo Infinite or new feature announcements, that's that, I'm sorry to say that's not what we're going to do today. Um, I think Dan has some really cool stuff, though, that if you're just interested in how something like that trailer comes to, comes to fruition from the very beginning pitch all the way to what is shown at the E3 Auditorium, I think we're going to do something that's not been done before. We're going to look through, and if I'm not mistaken, you actually have the presentation that we're going to look through today is kind of what you used at the very, very beginning when the first concept was pitched to the internal team and to our partners across the Xbox org. Is that more or less true? Yeah, so when we make anything here, we also have to just get buy-off from the internal team and make them excited about it as well. So this was, and then we have multiple meetings throughout the E3 process where we have to show updates and all of that kind of stuff. And so this is largely one of the very earliest versions of it, but then there's been some new things that were added over time. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. Much so um, before we do that, I guess I, I should take just a small step back, um, since like we should just make sure everybody knows who you are and kind of what you do here. Because uh, what people may not know is you and I actually both kind of go way back, and we, I'm pretty sure we overlapped ten years uh, back in the day at Bungie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we did. We I worked at Bungie in 2005 with Jim McQuillan. That I started the Bungie Vidox. Yes, and the Bungie podcast. Uh, that was the first thing I ever did was the Brute Vidoc because before that, Jim McQuillan, who now still works at Bungie. The Ete Brute? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good Vidoc. He uh, used to work for this company called Film Oasis, and they made the Halo 2 documentary, and that's what I first uh, interned on when I was in high school. And so wow. that's how I got to know Jim, was actually through a guy named Claude who works, uh, who made Halo.Bungie.org. And I met you at his house. That's when right. You did a... That's right. You were filming footage there, right? Yeah. That's... Well, I was just playing. Yeah, but some we we did do. Well, okay, one of his land parties, we did do a bunch of capture because it made its way into some of those Vidocs yeah. as well. But yeah, 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 wow, you were in high school. Yeah, it was two thousand three. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's a while ago. Whew. And then, uh, yeah, then two years later, I worked at Bungie, and then my parents wanted me to go to college. So I had to go to college instead of working at Bungie. So uh, I did that. And then I would never thought I was going to work in games again. And I started working in New York City. And 343 got started, and they contacted me. And I've been out here since the end of 2010 working on Halo. I basically, a lot of people don't know this, but when 343 took over Halo, Bungie was still making content for, for Halo Reach. And so if we wanted to promote anything, we would go to Bungie and be like, can you make us this trailer or anything like that? So when I came aboard, I started up the video team inside of uh, Halo, inside of 343. And uh, that was kind of what my job was, to start up their video team, start making content so that you know, we could do it all in-house. And so I did that for two years for pretty much all the Vidox for Halo 4. And then after that, I went and worked with Kiki on her new endeavor, which was mostly doing like uh, TV shows, the Halo channel, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's yeah. like pretty much living the dream from a community to sort of a marketing content person, and now you're right in the middle of the development team. Yep, yep. And I think nowadays you're on the you're the narrative experiences director. Yep. That is your That's your title, and uh, you're our 
obviously you're still responsible with the team for cool things like E3, but you're also now really focused on experiences within the game itself. Yes. Cool. Yeah. We're not talking about that stuff today. No. Though, so nice. Uh, we'll go ahead and divert there. So, um, and then the last piece of housekeeping, we're not going to be doing, uh, we're not going to actually play Halo today. I know some people like to try to get the skins. Next week we'll be back for kind of our end of the year social stream. Uh, we're looking to have special guest Chris Lee. We're going to play some Halo 5 Holiday Fiesta and kind of have a good time with that. But um, today, I think Dan's got enough great content here that we think you'd be interested in seeing. So we're not going to we're not going to play the game today. We're just going to walk through. It looks to be 114 slides on uh, on Dan's laptop with a couple videos thrown in. So I think the first thing we should do before we talk about how we made the trailer was kind of just a palate cleanse and a refresher. Let's just watch the trailer as we saw it in June. Just okay. in its raw form. Sure. Without talking, and then we'll come back and you can do your thing. All right. All right. Sounds good. Here we go. Good stuff. Okay, so there you have it, the Halo 3 Infinite E3 trailer. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I just one more time. I see a lot of people in chat probably joining us late. Thanks. Good to have you here. Uh, we are getting ready to dive into the original kind of behind-the-scenes vision deck that, that led to the creation of the E3 trailer. We're not going to be revealing new stuff today. We're, there's no gameplay that you're going to see today. Dan is just going to walk us through the thought process and kind of all the nuts and bolts behind the scenes that came together to deliver the trailer that we just saw. So if we're all on the same page, which I, I hope we are, um, Dan, I'm going to turn it over to you. We have 114 slides to go. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, again, we are not showing anything new. Uh, the next thing that we will see right after this slide is a breakdown of the trailer. Um, it's basically from start to finish di the trailer in different points uh, through the development of the trailer. And I'm going to go through kind of what we were thinking while before anything was even made, kind of how we reevaluated what we wanted to do um, in our first kind of steps showing anything related to Infinite. Um, and then the last thing is basically just show from concept art to the trailer asset and uh, there'll be a bunch of basically shot for shot how it went from concept to the actual final thing. Um, so here we go, here's a, a making of the trailer.
cool. Love that video. Yeah, so um, to kind of start at the beginning, uh, at 343, we do a lot of kind of looking back at ourselves and, and looking at like the way that we've promoted Halo in the past. And one thing that we really looked at were the way that Halo has been marketed. And one thing that we really wanted to change in coming out with Infinite was change the, the perception around things. And instead of starting from from fear, like with Halo 4 and Halo 5, it was, you know, hunting Master Chief and Halo 4, Chief and a lot of the marketing materials was shown being restrained. And the kind of marketing tagline was an ancient evil awakens. We really wanted to focus for the campaign for Halo Infinite on hope. And that kind of became uh, something that was really important to us to come to have that come across. Um, as we stated earlier, I'm a longtime Halo fan. I got into this community at a really young age. And I, the first thing I ever saw was the Macworld trailer, actually. And the, those images and all of those things from Macworld always stuck in my brain. And we wanted to get back uh, to that. And so we really wanted to have more hope, more mystery, more wonder, more agency, more heroism, more symbolism in the trailer, and just, uh, like I said, more wonder. We really wanted to focus on that feeling of being able to to have a living world uh, be at your fingertips. And uh, to get back to what kind of Halo 1 espoused, which was uh, that feeling of kind of going, cresting over a hill and seeing places for you to go explore. Um, so our, our next steps became, how do we turn fear to hope? Um, how do we create a sense of rhythm in the trailer so that as you're watching it, you can start to seed things that later get paid off as the trailer progresses throughout the, the minutes and seconds? Um, how do we connect to uh, our legacy? Um, you know, we're an almost 20-year-old franchise at this point. We can't we can't neglect neglect that. How do we build a sense of mystery in it? And how do we include Master Chief? Because we knew that we would have to. Um, and we wanted to do that in a special way. So what does hope look like? How do we create a shorthand for it? How do you make a feeling visual? Um, how do we create that sense of rhythm? What can we return to and weave with, within? Um, Connecting to our legacy and mystery, that, what that meant to us was how do we invite people to tell their own stories? Because the stories they tell are largely better than any story that, that we can create because they're personal and they're their own. Um, and so our North Star became that we wanted to leave the audience believing that this is a place I want to live in, explore, and fight for. And then I asked myself, how did Halo kind of combat evolve do that? And I created this video because, again, I sit for people that are coming into the chat now, like one thing that I stated was we largely have to sell these ideas not just to executives but just to the team because these trailers and things like that are made by a significant amount of people. And so if you can connect it back to something that was in the past, something familiar, uh, you largely can get buy off on on ideas a lot quicker, and so in Halo One, I created this video that basically shows some of the ideas that I wanted to espouse in the trailer, which is that when you 're walking around in Halo One, you can look down at the world and the world goes on, and it feels like the space you 're in, even though it 's a corridor or it's feels somewhat cramped when you look out onto the space, it feels like it goes on forever, so the space has this sense of expanse and um even though you're kind of in this tight area, it feels much larger than it actually is. And so we wanted to get back to that idea in the trailer, ideally. So we created kind of these principles that we would refer to with the team. Um, the first one was that the world is larger than the frame. The other thing that I'll say here is that any of this art that you're seeing is not actual concept art for Halo Infinite. This is just some renders that I did. Um, so. <laughs> I just don't want that to get twisted. Um, again, this is not concept art. The, the second belief was that we wanted to uh, empower the audience to create their own stories because the, the stories that the community creates, like I said earlier, is better than anything we can make. Like We want people to speculate on this stuff. We want people to talk about it. We want people to get excited about it because we're excited about it. And then the third one is, uh, this was actually one. So Chris Lee 
had this mandate that he wanted, which was that every week he wanted an email that basically stated, this is the progress on the trailer, uh, these are the things that are coming up, and this is kind of what's, what's happened in the last couple of days. And so every time that I would send one of these emails, they were kind of like these nicely formatted emails, and one of them would always, at the end of it, we would always say, make the composition a place you want to get lost in and make the world a place you want to go. And I think that concept is really important for Halo because when I, you go back and you look at the Macworld stuff or you look at even Silent Cartographer or uh, just the, the level Halo on in Halo 1, um, it has that sense of like it's this bright, cheerful place but you get to shoot things and ride around. And it's kind of fulfilling all of these uh, kind of... Uh, fantasies that you have about about sci-fi and, and that whole idea of kind of going out amongst the stars and I think that that concept was so strong and so we wanted to make the trailer this place that you want to repeatedly go and get lost in and we wanted to fill each frame with that sense of of that and so we created this graph for how we wanted this to to flow and how we wanted people to experience the trailer as it was happening and this is 100 percent real this was what we had it's because it's not going to be believed like that's the reason i'm like stating this um this was the experiential escalation we wanted people to have we wanted people to be like i don't know what this is this is cool this is beautiful i think this is halo and then this is halo i'm excited and so we kind of mapped this out in like February. This was a, a while ago, how we wanted it to feel as people were kind of watching it. Um, and then here were some of the results after E3. What is this? Red Dead? No. no. Graphics look crazy on this game. Realistic rocks, my boy. Recoil? Oh, oh it's Rage. Oh, I don't oh, know. No, it's too modern. No, no, it's no, no, no. Cell. I don't think it's Rage. What is this? Far Cry Primal 2. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Africa 2. What's this, though? Oh, hang on, they're fucking, they're Halo Marines. They're fucking Halo Marines. They're 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 there we go. They're... Bruh. Bruh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, Halo! Whoa! Halo 6, my boy! Wow! Oh, Halo! Oh, Wait a minute! Oh, 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 Let's go! The Chief is back! Let's go! The Chief is back! Well, McConaughey really went to the peak, the peak of that he escalation. Was into it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Surprising. Um, so, yeah, we had uh, everything was kind of feeding into, again, that central idea of hope. But we wanted it to have all of these themes, and they're all culminating and building into that idea of hope. So, the earliest kind of ideas we had, I remember sitting in a room with Tim Longo and Chris and a, and a few other people, and we had this idea of what if it felt like every shot what if every shot felt like you were arriving one moment after something has happened? And so you're not seeing the cause, but you're seeing the effect. Um, I just said this, but here's a fancy graphic that says exactly that. Um, and so there's this sense that uh, of life or intelligence that's just out of reach, and the ideas became like you would, as you're arriving to the shot, you're seeing a smoldering fire, again, uh, eliciting this idea that there's a sense of life that you're not seeing, or bent grass, or vibrating puddles, or rolling shell casings, or abandoned meals, or animals encroaching on human encampments, or the sea reclaiming a warthog. And some of these got into the trailer, some of them didn't. It was more just a kind of conversation starter. And it was something that uh, the team got kind of excited about because it allows you to do what we had talked about, which was it allows the audience to create their own story. And again, that story that they create is better than anything we can make. By the way, you're getting uh, seen a couple of shout outs in our mixer chat here. Uh, somebody says, who makes your decks? They look good. And 
when you got somebody with uh, who has a lifelong history of making videos and creating content and telling stories, Dan can make a damn nice deck. Yeah, I do make. Yeah, I make the decks. Um, and then the next part was, uh, how do we make hope visual? I talked about this earlier. It's like we needed to have this sense of rhythm in the trailer so that there's something that is uh, in 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 frames or in parts of it that feels like it's it's the secret that's unfolding as the trailer's going on. Um, and then I asked, so again, how do you make hope visual? Go and define the word hope. Get a thesaurus. You will see that hope is a bunch of different things. Hope can be a flare, a signal, a vector, a trajectory, lighthouse, guidance, beacon, hope. So what was always there? Past the canyons and rolling hills, what was the lighthouse on the ring? What was that thing in Halo 1? It ended up being these. These were uh, something that were in Halo 1. Uh, Jeremy Patnaud, who works on our fiction team, is a, is a good friend of mine. And I would constantly run ideas past him because we're both huge Halo 1 fans. And I'm like, Jeremy, what were these things in Halo 1? What was their fictional relevance and what were they actually doing? And he was like, I don't know that there was any real fiction uh, for them. I think they're called communication towers or communication beacons. But in Halo 1, when you first see them, what they are from a gameplay perspective is it's just something that tells you that past this little canyon that you're in, there's more to go explore. And that idea was so kind of sticky to me. It was something that became really fascinating. And so I went, booted up Halo 1, captured this video, because again, I have to prove to the team that this could work um, and be something that's interesting. And if you frame it in the right way, you could see hints of it and you could see parts of it off a of frame, or you could just see it's, um, you could just see the beacon there kind of firing off screen and lighting up the environment and that could do that thing that we that I've been talking about this entire time of hinting at at story and hinting at things that can be explained uh, over time but essentially when they go back and watch the trailer they'll see that it was always there um, in the shots is there sound coming through on this? Okay, I didn't know of my voice. I'm hoping I was. And so, again, it gave us these things. It gave us sound, vibration, attention, rhythm. It gave us all of these things that were really helpful in constructing this trailer. Uh, and then I'm, t again, talking to Jeremy. He was like, yeah, if you do do that, there was something really interesting in the Starry Night trailer. We're both huge fans of that trailer. Um, and I'll just play this. I had never known this until Jeremy told me, and it's kind of fascinating. You ever wonder what's up there? Like what? Maybe someone up there was wondering what it's like here. I guess. Do you think we'll ever meet them? I hope so. Don't you? So, did you see it? And essentially what this is, is I, and I never knew this, so at the end of this trailer, a wraith fires off a, a plasma mortar, and it's hurtling towards Chief, or it's, uh, I don't know if it ever kind of hits the ground, but it, it's going towards Chief. And in the beginning here, if you pay attention, you'll Maybe see that there there's actually like this symmetry in the trailer where that, that same plasma mortar is mirrored in the beginning of the trailer where you're seeing that shooting star by the grass there. And they wanted to kind of have that bookend where there is this, like I said, the symmetry of the shooting star and the mortar fire kind of uh, at the beginning and end. And it became, that was kind of uh, doing what we wanted this trailer to do, where it was essentially like this hint in the beginning that ran throughout the entire trailer and that then culminated at the end. Um, and you see it here where... Early on in the trailer, you see that kind of plasma fire go up behind the tree, and it's it's a hint at where we're going at the end of the trailer. And by the way, I'm just most of the mixer chat is in the same boat I am in. I've seen that Starry Night trailer dozens and dozens of times. I was at Bungie when it was first being storyboarded and saw the wireframes. 
until I saw this presentation a few months ago, I myself also had never noticed that shooting star before. So you just blew a lot of people's minds in Mixer Chat. I'm with you. Most of us have never seen that and certainly never made that connection that it was all intentionally planned to have this uh, well-thought-out bookend. So you blew some minds just right there, Dan. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I... Sorry, I'm not reacting to the chat. It's hard for me to talk and, yeah, and you, read that at the you same got, time. You, got, you do your thing. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the <laughs> chat. Right. So far, you're doing good based on what I'm seeing here in the chat window. Okay, cool. Uh, so, so the next kind of element that we wanted to weave into this trailer was nostalgia, which is largely just uh, unveiling the Halo property slowly over time through uh, iconography, um, certain languages of uh, form and things like that. So... So we had mystery, hope, and nostalgia as three pillars of this trailer. Mystery being that thing of, in this example you see here, you see like smoke coming out of a cave, which um, visually just elicits the idea that something living must be there if smoke is coming out of that cave. Um, seeing kind of relics of, uh, in that example, it's you can kind of see it. It's like a rusted out car. Again, something must have been there, um, but it's kind of broken down. Hope was the beacon. Nostalgia is seeing parts of the UNSC architecture, whatever that ended up being. We didn't specifically know when this exact slide was made, but just essentially iconic shape, language, and characteristics of, of Halo kind of being involved, uh, unveiled uh, as the trailer progressed. Um, so again, yeah, we had this kind of these three themes, and these themes kind of depending on the shot, this is what this is showing, depending on the shot, we essentially were, um, some shots might have more mystery, some might, shots might have more hope. And, but we had to have all of these in there be, to kind of craft the story that we wanted to tell. Um, and we really wanted to empower the audience to feel like it, it explore. Um, and we wanted to elicit wonder and questions. That was our our big goal. Um, we wanted them to feel like an explorer throughout, and then we wanted them to have those questions and have that feeling of hope by the end. And again, to reiterate the same point that I've kind of stated a bunch here, it's the sound and imagery pose questions that we don't answer. It's really important that we don't answer all the questions that we pose, because again, the questions we pose should be personal to the audience and to the fans. Like we want them to kind of create the story for us and um, to have that personal experience with Halo. Um, and I think this last line is actually really Im important because the, the trailer really exists to sell the promise of the world that we're creating and sell the promise of the, the hopeful nature, I think, of the world that we're creating. All right, and what do I have here? Oh, earliest concepts. I don't think anybody wants to see concepts, right? <laughs> <laughs> These were some of the earliest slides that we have. Um, again, kind of emerging from the cage, cave, which uh, ended be up being in there, animal herds. Again, this kind of, some of this went into the slip space nature of wanting to, the slip space demonstration nature of this. Like we wanted to show that our engine can do a lot of characters on screen at once, because that is one of the, great things about our engine. Um, hints in the mud. We created these mood boards. Um, again, we, we thought about doing interesting framings on things so that we aren't as showing everything. And then over time, we show more and more. It kind of, that, that visual um, language of cropping things so that your mind has to fill in the frame is, is something that was really important early on. And that's essentially what happens when you see Chief in the trailer. I don't know, the earlier breakdown trailer that we showed at the very beginning of this shows that we played with a lot of how to show Chief. Um, it was, anytime you have Master Chief in a trailer for Halo, it's going to be probably the most contentious shot you, you have in the trailer um, because people, everybody's going to have an opinion on how you should do it. Um, but what ended up being really important was that we wanted the fans to kind of fill in the rest of him. We wanted to show his helmet, show that he's there, but then have their mind fill in the blanks because that, again, f goes to that idea of them kind of empowering the audience to kind of come up with the story themselves. Um, 
yeah, I've just played a lot with like different ways to show people. Uh, this was something that we did, but ended up getting cut at the last minute. So the way that the stage is designed at E3, uh, we had some early understanding of what the stage was going to look like. And they have these right here where you're looking at this. You see Xbox One and Forza on the left-hand side. And then there's some screens on the uh, right-hand side. And so we, what we ended up doing was making essentially three different Every shot had three different cameras pointing at different parts of the of the world, and then as the shot progressed, it would fill in these. Uh, if you were at the show itself, you would essentially see this like panoramic view of the trailer. So it would feel like this kind of really wide version of the trailer, and this this actually ended up getting cut pretty much last minute. But it was a lot of extra work that we went in and did. Um, I would have loved to have seen that. I know sitting in the audience, I like the Forza guys. They did they did light up all those peripheral pieces, and I think they're it was pretty amazing the way that it did. But I didn't even know this was supposed to be maybe going to be something for us until yeah until I saw your presentation. Yeah, and this was just something I did for the lighting artists. Again, just to give you guys like a a glimpse into how some of this stuff is made. This is essentially like a a Pinterest board for how each shot needs to feel. Uh, in terms of color and mood and all of that kind of stuff. Burning Man. Yeah, Burning Man. Uh, <laughs> Alpine. Uh, this is actually w the earliest animatic, or if not one of the earliest animatics of the trailer. And you'll see it's a little bit different. Um, we added this stuff. We didn't know where the... You never know when you make an E3 trailer where you're going to end up in terms of the placement, like if you're going to be at the beginning of the show or if you're going to be at the middle or if you're going to be at the end. Uh, this video, the only reason I'm prefacing this is this video assumes that we were at the end, but it's more just to get people's minds head into like thinking about it because they're not necessarily on the same page as To close, pages I have one more exclusive title to share with you. I know some things changed, but I got to say, from what from what was one of the earliest concepts, that ended up being pretty damn close to what was actually shipped. Yeah, 
That was done in, uh, I think, early February. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were already pretty close to the mark. Yeah. And um, no, just so for, for the jokers in the chat or you're joining us late, no, that was not actual game footage from the Slipspace engine. We are watching an, an, an early concept animatic from the E3 2018 Halo Infinite trailer. Yeah. Yeah, so actually, this is, uh, we're almost actually at the end of this. But um, what I do have here is just per shot showing the, the concept art, and then in the bottom left corner, you'll see the actual shot from the game. So they're, they're pretty similar. Actually, strangely, super similar. Right, and the then we have rhino. some rhino. The rhino. Yeah. What did you guys? So we, I just referred to this as the space rhino. Was it? What, would, what did you guys? What, what we was the team called calling it this? That too. Oh, really? Yeah. Everyone just called it the space rhino. Yeah, we called okay. it the space rhino. I like the space uh, rhino. Let's make yeah. it official. <laughs> yeah, uh, Matt Aldridge. Uh, I know probably a lot of the community doesn't know who he is, but you probably should because he ended up. He's responsible for the Halo Four Master Chief. Um, he's an amazing modeler from ILM. I'm positive we'll have Matt on the stream at yeah, some point. As soon as really we're should. allowed to show some of the amazing stuff he's working on, he's he's very yeah. high on my list to get in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm only stating that because a lot of this was, is normally what Matt would talk about. Um, but Matt had this reference anatomy. His team then went and had some concept art made for what the space rhino would look like. Um, is this concept art? I think the the top is concept art. The bottom is actually the model. Yeah, it looks like it is the um, model. Just but we're experimenting with different yeah color different shading. And, yeah, exactly. Um, and then this is for scale. I thought this would be kind of cool to show people, so you can see how big Chief is in relation to the the animals that are in the trailer. Um, Master Chief. Uh, this is cool to just show the fans. And the only thing that I will say is. I spent a lot of time talking to Sparth. Sparth has spent. Uh, Sparth is our art director on Infinite, and this is a bit different than what I'm currently showing you. Uh, the the final model of Master Chief will be seen eventually, um, and it. I'm not saying this like I'm a huge Halo fan. It is by far the coolest, in my personal opinion, Master Chief that we've ever done, um, or that anybody's really ever done, um, and this is not the final one. This is just the E3 version from this year. Uh, but essentially, Matt made this sheet that, said, that shows like where they kind of took influences from to make that helmet. And so it has a little bit of Halo 2 and 3, uh, a little bit of 4, and it's a mixture of, of those. And again, it'll look a little bit different than what you're seeing here. Matt also put together this video showing like a, a spin around of it, a turntable of it. I think Sparth and Matt and team are uh, safe to say they're on the right track just based on the reactions during E3 and the reactions we're seeing right now. Yeah. And so uh, that's actually all I have. That was actually 114 slides, like we, we said. Blaze through it. Yeah. When time flies and you're having fun. <laughs> um, I mean, if you got a few more minutes before before we have to jump off, uh, yeah. I know we haven't had – I don't want to interrupt your flow, but if we have questions coming through from the chat specifically for Dan about – the three trailer or his process or anything like that. Um, more than happy to, to take a stab at that. We're not going to be hello, Jay. We're not going to be answering Good a lot of those you. questions uh, that I've seen scrolling through the the mixer feed for the last uh, forty five minutes. So, um, and I know I saw some questions coming up about slipspace and things like that. Just a reminder, um, 
we're hoping that we will have Chris Lee be a guest on the social stream next week. Chris is the head of the Halo Infinite team here at 343. Um, and as long as that works out, as I'm hoping, we'll have him on here. And maybe we can get him to answer a few of these questions that, that Dan and I are not equipped to answer. So hold those. Come back next week, and we'll see if we can get Chris to, to shed a little bit more light on what he and the team have been doing since June. But what do we got for Dan here? Is that the new 343i logo? Um, no. Not really, no. no. Dan just I, makes cool stuff like that for the heck of it. Yeah, that's actually true. So we, a lot of this presentation we gave to uh, people at PAX. They came and visited the studio. And actually, I just made that for the people as they entered the room so that there was something looping as they entered. All right, the questions are, are scrolling so fast. One that I saw popped up was just like, how did it feel after the trailer finally aired? And it was it was out there and seeing the reaction. Like, how did it feel for you personally? Um, that's a good question. I, I honestly was just proud that we finished it. And that, <laughs> like, it got, it got, it got out there. I, I don't, it was, I mean, I'll be, I'll, Honest, I, I had never actually done something like that uh, from start to finish. Uh, so it, w it was just really, um, I was more proud of the team for getting it across the finish line. And we did it in a way that I thought was really good. Like we didn't crunch on it at all. I don't think I ever saw somebody on uh, work in a weekend. Um, it, I was just more proud in the way that we got it finished. And we did not. And I swear this is true. We did not know how it was going to be received at all. Um, so I, I was just thrilled that people liked it. I think, uh, yeah, I think everyone did like it. Safe to say. I mean, get goosebumps still every time, right? And yeah. it was it was cool to be there in the moment, in the auditorium, and then later to see your sort of emotional escalation chart. Like, I mean, we, I literally experienced that in real time, and I think everyone sitting around us did, right? We could hear it. And you could just feel the energy kind of ramping yeah. up and then following the crescendo of, oh, my gosh, it's Halo, it's Chief. Yeah, I mean, I, that was, like, one thing that we kept having to come back to was mapping to that curve of, like, is it actually, especially with some, there's some things in there technically that we had to um, get right, like uh, depth of field, which I don't, it's a technical term, but, like, if you have a, an iPhone uh, that has portrait mode, it's the kind of bokeh that, blurs out when you take a, a portrait mode picture. If we didn't have that right, you would essentially see the warthog pretty early on in the trailer mm. as it goes across the desert. And so we had to make sure some of the tech was working because in early versions, executives will look at it and be like, well, right now I know that that's a warthog. And so you're kind of blowing your emotional curve. And so uh, we had to get that kind of tech right and we did. And um, again, like, I think that's the thing that I'm like really proud of is like a bunch of different teams came together to try to make that thing work. And, and we all did at the end of the day. This, these questions are scrolling so fast. It's really hard for me to, to keep up and see here. So loving all the engagement and excitement and interest here. Oh, that's a hard question. I see come right there from keys caught my eye. If you were to change anything about the trailer, what would you change? Um, man, I don't know. That's tough. Uh, I don't, I don't fully know. Cause mm. I think I, strangely, it might be some of the earlier music. Okay. I think that was contentious too for a lot of people. They were like, they didn't, they love, obviously like we all love the, the Halo 3 fanfare at the end. The, the music before that was something that was really hard to get right um, because it we couldn't have it feel like Halo and everything that we were doing, it kind of felt like it was too much like Halo in the beginning. And again, like we kept trying to map it to, we wanted to have that surprise of people not knowing that it was Halo. Um, I don't, but like even saying that, I don't even know what I would have changed yeah. the music to because I love working with Kazma. Yeah, it worked. It, yeah. it totally worked. I mean, it would have been cool if, if all the extra work you guys did to take advantage of the Microsoft Theater would have actually come to fruition. Like that would have been pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's out, out of your control, obviously. I've yeah. seen this question come up a couple times. Uh, what do you, when you say that we want it to be the player's story, like what do you mean when, you, when, you're, when you're referencing that a few times? Like you're saying that the story that the players can make up themselves is, is more, is, is the most powerful. Like, I think someone was just asking, like, what, what do you mean when you say that? Um, 
I mean that when you play Halo 1, if you actually go back and play that game, that game is incredibly light on story. Um, and I, the stories that I would create, I should put this in context. I mean, in 2001, I was a sophomore in high school, and I would go home and play that game. Um, and I would just kind of tool around in the Warthog and go over the, the kind of pastoral hills, and, this, and I would basically make my own story as to what I thought was happening because I never at the time I had never read Fall of Reach. Um, I didn't know that there was actually a, a larger kind of story, and obviously anybody at that time wouldn't have known that Halo would become the thing that it has become. Um, and so the story that I created was was personal. It was like my understanding of the world, and I think that is incredibly important to like is to, to give back to the fans because. Uh, I don't know if this is making any sense. No, I, I yeah, I understand what you're saying. I don't know if it's answering the, the if it's addressing specifically what our I don't even know who asked that question at this point. That was a, a long a long time ago, but yeah, I mean, it kind of goes with your whole like less is more approach of just not leaving things outside the not just telegraphing exactly to the audience. This is what's happening. You should feel this way. This is the thing that we want you to take away. It's leaving enough freedom there for players to use their own imagination and fill those gaps in and kind of personalize it, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of storytelling is is creating questions. And I think what we wanted to do is create a bunch of questions and then purposefully not answer them. Not because we don't know the answers. Like, we need to have the answers to those things. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like there's any intentionality into what we're creating. But we want the answers to be we want we want to kind of piecemeal out the answers our answers to that but if the if the community creates a better answer i mean i i think i think we want to give them that time to speculate and create those questions and and fill in the blanks themselves because if we're if we're just basically doing that i think it kind of cheapens the experience personally Looks like uh, Receptor has a question. I see. Was the trailer made in tandem with the slip space development, and then how did it, how was it to kind of work, build this trailer with an engine that's also being developed? I mean, I think it's safe to say, like slip space engine development's been kind of ongoing in different phases. For it's the culmination of a lot of work over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, but it is true that systems were underlying technical technical systems were coming online that you needed for this trailer like in parallel right so um, yeah the kind of crazy uh, chris should talk more about this than i than i should um but the crazy thing about slip space is there's a lot of the the underlying a lot of the underlying tech that was being built for slip space at the time of this trailer was none of the rendering technology and so we needed to create obviously a, a pretty good looking trailer but none of that technology at the time was essentially being worked on. And so around the time that this trailer was being made, they actually had to kind of go all hands on deck with certain people and have them focus more on some of the rendering technology and some of the different graphical enhancements that we were talking about. But even then, like, this is not the final... What you see there is not the final suite of, of oh, what no. will be in nope. Halo Infinite. Um, it's It's, I think... Chris would agree, and I don't think it's it's hurtful for me to say. I mean, I, our engine will always be working. Like, people will always be working on our engine. Totally, yep. All right, well, I think we're starting to get a little long on time. I see so many questions still coming in. Um, I don't know if we'll have time. I do see people saying, are the slides going to be available for us to see? I don't think we really have plans right now to release this as a standalone uh, piece. Of course, you can watch the video on demand of this stream here uh, on Mixer.com slash Halo for, I think, about two weeks or so before it kind of magically disappears. But right now, we don't really have, uh, I don't think we plan to put this out, out of context of the stream and of Dan kind of walking through what it all means. Um, Couple quick housekeeping notes for those that are still with us. Uh, as a reminder, next week will be our final Halo uh, 343 social stream. So we'll be back at 1.30 on Wednesday here on Mixer.com slash Halo. Fingers crossed that uh, studio head of Halo Infinite, uh, Chris Lee, will be joining us. And we're looking forward to sitting down with him. We're going to be playing some Halo 5. Tomorrow we have a pretty cool update coming to Halo 5 uh, just in time for the holiday season. So stay tuned for that. And also we rolled out the new season, which just recently kicked off. So some cool stuff going on in Halo 5. We're also prepping preparing for an MCC update as well, which 
if everything goes according to plan, that too should be landing next Wednesday with a couple cool new features, fixes, and improvements. So um, just a caveat on that, we're working really hard. The team's pushing to try to get this thing out next Wednesday. That's the goal. But uh, of course, we're going to see how testing and flighting goes this weekend. I'm also told that if you're an MCC insider with access to the insider program thus far, you should be able to get the build this weekend if you're curious to go on there and poke around. So keep an eye out for that. But stay tuned to us next week. Uh, by Monday, we'll know for sure if that update's on track. And then we'll have, of course, patch notes and all those full details. Um, and I think that was basically it for my, uh, my housekeeping notes. So, Dan, I really appreciate you coming here today yeah. and sharing this. Thanks, I man. hope our audience enjoyed this. It's kind of taking... Uh, something a different approach i don't think we've really gone to this level of content and behind the scenes and kind of how the sausage is made this is something that i would probably expect to see at like gdc for example so if you like this kind of thing if you enjoyed this stream today let us know because um there's so much making of story to tell in this building and uh, i'd like to find ways when the time is right to bring more of the, of the great work the team is doing and help you just understand uh, what goes into something like a trailer and then of course all the different aspects of the game as we slowly start revealing that over time. So it, it will happen, I promise. I've seen people saying, are you actually going to uh, show us real gameplay ever? I, pretty safe to assume between now and release, you will actually see and learn a lot more about Halo Infinite. So stay tuned for that. And a belated shout out to Atomic Jorge and all of our friends down in LATAM. We appreciate it. Um, thanks for the support. I've seen you come through a few times on chat, and I missed you earlier. So appreciate it. And um, Dan, yeah, thank final you guys. thoughts? Uh, no, I just my only real thought is that we really are making this in mind uh, with the fans. Like we we want this to be something that is extremely special for the people that have stayed with us for for as long as they have. Well, so, and I think to that point, it's just it's also a good reminder. Something that Chris has talked about a lot externally and internally is. Eventually, we will have a flighting program that will literally put the end development game in the hands of our community and give you a chance to just be right there with us and, and give us real feedback and help us really refine and hone the game that, that we all want Infinite to be. So we should have some news on that eventually. I don't know yet what that looks like, but uh, it's very important to the team. It is a pillar for development. It's never been done before for a Halo title, so... All the great work, for example, and learnings we got doing the MCC work and in flighting with the community, just imagine that's going to be applied to Infinite as well, and it's going to be a pretty exciting road. Yep. Cool. Well, so thank you all. Yeah. For, thanks, for Dan. In. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Sketch here. Thank you, Michael and Liz, for helping yeah. run the stream. And uh, we'll be back next Wednesday for our last stream of the year. And until then, uh, we'll see you online. Thanks. <laughs>